In this video we'll see how we can create a sidebar menu tree. You know, that kind of menu that has nested items, inside nested items, inside other nested items, and so on. To create this menu we'll be using Tailwind CSS, View and Headless UI. We'll cover problems like how to use recursion to create a tree view, styling active items, styling open disclosures, opening nested disclosures, and so on. Let's start with a bit of structure. We'll have a div to hold everything together, another div for the sidebar, and the main for content. Inside the sidebar, we'll have a div to hold the logo, and a nav element to hold the anchor tags. We'll have home, posts, and this one will have some child elements. Let's say all posts, add new, and categories. Then we'll have media, and this will also have child elements. We'll do library, add new, and let's also add some child elements here. We'll call this third level. Okay, let's add some styling. We'll do flex, because we want the sidebar on the left, content on the right. And then we'll add main h screen because we want this element to fill up the entire screen. For the sidebar, we'll do width 64, shrink 0, bg gray 50, border right, border gray 200, and let's also add some vertical padding. Then for the logo container, we'll just add some horizontal padding. We'll use px4. And I even have a logo component, so let's import it. And use it. Okay, let's make it a bit smaller. So I'll do H8 with auto. I'll turn this into an inline block. And we're good to go. Moving on, we'll add a bit of padding for the main element. And for the nav tree, what I want to do is turn it into an array of objects we can then loop through. So let's grab all the labels. Go up and say const nav items equals array. Paste those in. Comment them out. And we'll have ref label children, and in this case it will be an empty array, and maybe an icon. Next up we have posts, and this one has child elements. So I'll grab this one, paste it in, and we have all posts, add new, and categories. Then we should have media, so this is wrong, should be media. And this one also has a bunch of child elements. We have library, add new, and here we need to add our third level. Let's format this, and here we go. Okay, now we should loop through this array and render these out. I'll go here and we'll have template and we'll do v4 item in nav items. We'll set the label as key. Let's grab this, paste it in. Then we'll have ref, which is item.ref and item.label. Now for the child elements, we'll grab this, paste it in, and if the item has child elements, so v if item children length, then we'll do another v4 here. So do v4 child and item children, set the key, the ref, and display the label here. Let's turn the anchors into flex elements so we can easily see them. 
and I'll add a bit of margin here. So I'll do class ML4 and remove these elements. So right now we've covered two levels of indentation. We have the first level, and if the item has any child items, we have another loop to cover the second level. However, as you may remember here under media, we have a third level. So we have one, two, and then three. It wouldn't be wise to continue adding another V4 here. What we could do is extract a nav component and make use of recursion. So let's do that. I'll go here and say new file nav item dot view. And we'll have script setup and template. Let's grab the template from the layout. So I'll get this, paste it in. And as you can see, we'll have to pass item as a prop. So let's define the props. Item will be an object. And then inside the layout, instead of template, we'll have nav item. And of course, pass the item as prop. Okay, so failed to import. We need to import the nav item component. And here we go. Now to show the third level, we'll need to go to our nav item component. And instead of using an anchor tag, we'll use the nav item. So we'll do nav item. We'll pass the item, which will be child, and then remove all this. And here it is. Now that we have our menu tree in place, we can start working on toggling the child elements. For that, we'll use the headless UI disclosure components. So let's grab the basic example, paste it in, and import the components. Import, disclosure, disclosure button, panel from, headless UI slash view. And here they are. Now, the anchor tag should only be visible if the item doesn't have any children. So I'll do if not item children dot length. Otherwise, we should display the disclosure. Then here we'll have item dot label. Let's add flex. Let's remove this styling. Here we'll have the nav items. So let's grab them. Remove this. Refresh, and if I click on posts, we have all posts, add new categories. If I click on media, we have library, add new. And if I click here, we have the third level. Let's add that left margin back in. So I'll do M class ML4, and here it is. Moving on, let's add some icons, at least for the top level elements. So I'll go here and for home, we'll have home icon. And I already have here icons installed. So I'll do import home icon from here icon slash view outline. For posts, we'll do newspaper icon. And then for media, we'll do photograph icon. Okay. Let's go back to our nav item component to render them. So here we'll do component and we'll have is item dot icon, but only if we have an icon. So we'll do the if item dot icon. And then we'll add the span for the label. Let's do the same thing for the button. And the button should also have like an arrow to show that this element has more child elements. So here we'll do chevron down icon. And I'll import that from here icons. Let's make the icons a bit smaller. And we'll do class with 6 h6 shrink 0. 
and let's copy and paste that everywhere we have icons. And let's continue styling the anchor tag. We'll do class flex with full item center py2 px3 for padding text sm font medium and let's say text gray 600 okay let's do the same for the button and let's also add some margin to the icons So MR2 and MR2. And to push the arrow to the right, we can go here and make this element grow by adding flex one. Now, because these are buttons, the text is centered. So we can go here and say text left. Okay. Let's go ahead and add some hover styles. So I'll go here and say hover BG gray 100. And let's also do rounded MD. Let's add some padding to the container. I'll go to layout. And here we'll do MT2 to add some top margin and PX2. That's better. Now let's add some hover styles for the icon as well. Here we'll do Actually, we need to add group here. And this will be text gray 400 by default. And then on group hover, we'll do text gray 600. And there we go. Let's grab this style and apply it to the bottom as well. I think I can grab the whole thing. And the only difference is that this one has text left. Refresh, and there we go. Moving on, let's style the open state of the disclosures. So the disclosure component exposes an open prop. So we'll do v slot open, and then we can use this to rotate the chevron. So I'll go here, and when this is open, We'll do minus rotate 180 degrees. Otherwise, we'll do nothing. Refresh. And here we go. Isn't that nice? Let's go ahead and do something for the label as well. So we'll go here and say if is open. We'll do font semi bold. And let's say text gray 800. Otherwise, we'll have text gray 600 and font medium. Let's remove these two styles here. Save, refresh, and here it is. Let's do the same for the icons. So here we'll have open. Then we'll do text gray 600. Otherwise, text gray 400 and remove this here it is and then for the chevron we'll add text gray 600 to the open state and text gray 400 to the default state that's better finally our menu item links should also have like an active state so let's go back to our layout, to our nav items, and add an active property. We'll set that to false for all elements except for the home item. Let's go back here and style the anchor. We'll do if item active, then text gray 800 and maybe font semi bold. Otherwise, we'll do text gray 600 font medium. And let's remove the classes from here. And here it is. 
Let's do something similar for the icon. I'll go down here and say if item is active, then we'll have text gray 600. Otherwise, we'll do text gray 400 and remove this class from here. Here it is. Now, what would happen if the active item is inside the disclosure? So if we go back to layout and turn this to false and set add new from post to true, save, refresh, open posts, and add new is active, but the disclosure was closed. We need to make it so that the disclosure stays open if it contains an active item. Now, the way we can instruct the disclosure to be open is by passing in a prop called default open, set that to true. Save and refresh. Now all the disclosures are opened. To determine whether or not the disclosure should be open, we can create a computed prop that checks the item children for active items. So we can go here and do const has active child equals computed props.item.children and we can use a sum function to check if we have at least one active item. Let's grab this and paste it here. Refresh and here it is. But what if we set the third level to be active? So let's go back to layout. Set this to false. And then let's set this to true. Refresh. And our disclosure is opened, but only the nested one. That's because when we check for the active child, we only check for the immediate children. So we need some recursion here as well. So let's add some curly brackets. And here we'll have a function called has active item that will receive an array of items. And it will return whether or not that array of items contains at least one element that's active or has children that are active. So here we'll do has active item, item dot children. And of course, we need to call it here. So we'll do return has active item props dot item dot children. Save, refresh, and there we go. Now both of our disclosures are opened. Let's go back to layout and set this to false. And let's view the menu tree in a bigger browser. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Bye.